Ever wonder why people click on your videos but don't stick around? It's not about keywords, the metadata, or even the YouTube algorithm. The real problem? It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. Yep. It was me. Well, my editing, anyway. My videos were boring. And if your videos are not getting more views and more watch time, well, it's probably you too. Sorry. But here's the thing. Great video editing isn't about flashy transitions and using a ton of stock footage. It's about editing the video to keep the viewers engaged from start to finish. And guess what? You don't need to spend 10 hours per video to achieve that. I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks that I've learned in the seven years that I've been on YouTube. I'm no pro editor, but I've definitely learned a few things that took my channel from where I was to almost 20,000 subscribers in only a couple of years. I'll show you how to make your videos more engaging, more watchable, and yes, do it all without making editing your full time job. These tips work with all video editing software programs, so don't worry about the software yet. Because my first tip is actually done during the filming process and not during editing at all. As you're looking at the camera and you say your line, if you mess up, just pause, inhale, and start over again. You may have to do that multiple times, or if you're like me, about 75 times. When you get to the take that you like the best, speak right to the camera and say, that's the one. Okay, moving on. You can even do something like clap when you're starting a new section. It's not just for show. It gives you a clear visual and audio marker when you're scrubbing through your footage. This will help you to delete all of your mistakes very quickly so that now you're only working with the parts of the footage that you actually wanted to work with, not a hundred different mistakes. Next, we wanna pick up our pacing. I know that when I'm on YouTube watching videos, I tend to watch them on 1.25 to 1.5 times speed. I wanna hear what they're saying, but I wanna hear it faster. When I'm editing my videos, if I'm tempted to play it back at 1.5 speed, I know that my pacing is off. I'm gonna demonstrate exactly exactly how I fix that using veed.io, and I'm very proud to be partnering with them once again on this video. Veed is an online video editing program that is ideal for beginners. It's user-friendly, it's affordable, and it's cloud-based, so it works with both PC and Mac. It has a ton of great features like the one I'm about to show you, so if you are in the market for a new video editing program, I will leave a link to them in the description below. After I have removed all of the mistakes, I select the clip in the timeline that I need to edit, and I come up to Media and then Custom. You'll have to play with this a little bit to find out what the correct speed is for you, but for myself, I find that somewhere between 115 to 125 seems to work the best for me and my own speech pattern. The goal is to keep it moving along quickly enough that nobody would be tempted to watch it on 1.5 speed on YouTube. Because spoiler alert, if your video is boring, no one's going to watch it. Next, we want to remove as many pauses as possible. My personal rule of thumb is to never have dead air that lasts longer than about half a second. We never want there to be a time period where there is no speaking, no audio, no music, no dialogue, no sound effect, no nothing. But I find that when I'm editing everything in the same line in Veed, I still end up with pauses that are a little bit longer than I would like. And that's where J cuts and L cuts come in. I will split the clip and then move one to the line above it. When you have the sound from the next clip start, while you're still watching the original clip, it's called a J cut. And L cut is when we see the second clip, but we're still listening to the audio from the first. Don't worry, there will not be a test at the end of this. In Hollywood movies, they typically do this with dialogue with multiple people, but there's no reason why we can't do that even if you are the only person in your video. I do this all the time simply to make it so that the minute I stop speaking, the next sentence starts and there's no big breath in between. When you do this right, people won't even know that it's happening and I guarantee you watch videos all the time where this is going on. You just don't notice it because the pacing of the video is so good that you're completely focused on what the person is saying and not on their editing techniques. Because the reason that we do these things is to keep the viewer watching as long as possible. If they click but then they bail within the first 30 seconds of the video, you are teaching YouTube that people don't like your video and therefore they are not going to show it to more people. Another way to create visual interest very simply is called a zoom cut. Is that really a thing or did I just make that up? Please hold. Okay, good. It is actually a thing. The beauty of a zoom cut is that it doesn't require a second camera. It just means you're going from a wide shot to a mid shot or from a mid shot to a close up or from a wide shot to a close up and back again. It's the same camera angle, but we're just zoomed in on something when it's really important and we want to direct the viewer's attention to what we are saying right then. Did you see what I did there? Whenever I said something where I wanted you to pay attention, we zoomed in and then we zoomed back out again. I love zoom cuts because they really don't require any skill. We just split the clip on each end and then we can zoom in a tiny little bit or we can exaggerate 
exaggerate it and zoom in a lot if we're trying to be funny or we really want to get the viewer's attention. Now we've removed all of the extra pauses, we've done a few zoom cuts to add interest, and you're not speaking too slowly. Now we just have to add a little bit more visual interest. Back in the day, I used to do very little editing. I have been on YouTube now for seven years, and I knew nothing about editing. I was completely self-taught, so I did as little as possible. It was not uncommon for me to go 10 or 20 seconds at a stretch and have nothing change on screen, and it didn't matter. Back then, it still worked, and I was still able to get clients for my videos. Ah, oh, those were the days. I feel like an old lady now. Back in my day, we used to walk to school uphill both ways in the snow with no shoes on, carrying 10 pounds of books in my backpack. We are fighting for everyone's attention these days. And in order to get it and keep it, we have to not only provide them with value, but we also have to give them something to look at on screen. Over the last few weeks, I really wanted to understand what was working right now in 2024 when it comes to editing to keep people's attention. I went to my YouTube homepage and I looked at all the videos that were being recommended to me. And I was looking for ones that were published with in the last week that had hundreds of thousands of views. And then I started taking notes like crazy. How often were they changing what was on screen? What were their titles like? Were they using music? Were they using sound effects? I took a ton of notes. And what I found was that the people that had the most number of views on their videos and were getting the most love and reach from the algorithm were people that were making a change every three or four seconds on screen. Every three to four seconds? Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I know it sounds like a lot, but it can be as simple as having text pop up on the screen like this. It can have a graphic or some B-roll pop up like this. I have no idea what I'm gonna put there while I'm filming this, but I'll figure it out during the editing process. We can have a lower third pop up right here at the bottom, or it can be up here. Nobody says it has to be at the bottom just cause it's called a lower third. And between all of those things and the zoom cuts and a little bit of B-roll now and then, now we're talking. We just need to make sure that we don't have extended periods where nothing is happening on screen at all, except your smiling mug talking to the camera. I know you're beautiful, but come on, give us something more to look at. I know it sounds like a lot, but using simple techniques like what we're talking about now will enable you to make those changes every three or four seconds. Play your video from the beginning. And when you get to a part where more than five seconds goes by and nothing has changed on screen, that's where we're going to add something. You can also use B-roll and Veed luckily has a large library of stock footage to choose from. So if I'm making a video about Savannah, Georgia, I just go to their stock footage library and I type in Savannah, Georgia. They've got a bunch for me to choose from. I just pick one, I drop it down onto my timeline and boom, now I've got B-roll. If you change up what they're looking at every couple of seconds, it's called a pattern interrupt, and this keeps their attention longer. They're watching the video and then, oops, something else happened. And oh my gosh, look, something else happened just now. It definitely holds their attention. But one of the biggest mistakes that I see beginning video editors make is going overboard with the transitions. Just because your software can do this, doesn't mean you should. An unnecessary transition has the opposite effect of a pattern interrupt. It is so jarring that it really is off-putting and it just makes the person want to leave the video altogether. You'll notice that this video has very few transitions. We've done jump cuts, straight cuts, zoom cuts, but not a lot of the spinning in between frames and that was done on purpose. We don't want to make anybody seasick. I do not want them to feel like they're watching the Blair Witch Project. So keep your transitions to a minimum and use them strategically. But all of these editing techniques will not make up for a lackluster filming area. So if you're ready to overhaul where you film your videos and how, watch this video next. I'm going to show you exactly how to set up an amazing DIY YouTube filming studio and tell you the three things that you absolutely must have in order for your videos to be successful. Action! I'm the problem, it's me. No. <laughs>